Hey guys, uh, this is Kodraco, and I wanted to show you guys my render settings for Cinema 4D for intros and text objects. Just so I could show you guys list, uh, how to get best out of your render settings, you know, make some cool effects. Alright, first of all, let me show you my, uh, oops, that's not right. Let me show you my render settings for uh, still images. Alright, first, just general, full render. I'm going to go through just all these tabs. Output, I got 1280 by 720, resolution 100, render region selected. And uh, film aspect, pixel aspect, uh, those don't really matter unless you're making intros. But, you know, you can just mess with that. I think I, I'm think basically what I want to do is film and video, um, HGTV, 720. And that basically works in res res resolution 100. And then, yeah, whatever. But, uh here on save <laughs> sorry about that i don't put anything for file because sometimes i save it in different places so instead of having to go back in here every single time i can just keep it on here and then i can uh, save it inside their picture viewer but i'll click on save obviously format png what is that a lot of people have been saying they don't find png so quick time png depth 8 bit name whatever alpha channel has to be like that's the most important so you don't get any background it'll just be clear transparent when you transfer it to cinema 4d a lot of people have been saying there's a black background there won't be there then 24 bit death death ring and includes sound i'm not entirely sure what that means but it's already ticked so i'll see what it is that multi-pass i don't mess with i understand that's really uh it's a really cool thing to mess with and you can like uh do a lot of different stuff in it but i don't really mess with it anti-listing i change to best min one by one max two by two if your computer's really bad then i go to max four by four if your computer's just absolutely terrible then don't anti-alias but it, it does uh improve your image images options i don't mess anything i don't mess with anything here mostly because i don't know what any of it is uh ambient inclusion i'll check that i don't mess with anything except contrast is messed with and i don't know why but i must have done something a while ago but contrast 20 percent i guess that works Global illumination. I uh, use if you want to understand how to access these, go to effect, and then you got ambient. You don't see it right here, but here, for example, if I I don't have anything messed with, right? Yeah, if I click out global illumination or I delete it, if I go to effect global illumination right there, and I just you know it's all fine. And then um, also in a radiance cache file, just uncheck auto save. You don't need that. Depth of field. Um, I use this sometimes, uh, but not all the time. But if I am using it, I'll just check it and I won't mess with anything. And basically, global illumination adds really good lighting, like realistic lighting effects, which uh, y y it's kind of hard to notice the difference, but it does make a difference. Ambient occlusion also adds different lighting, and like, I, I, I don't know, it seems to me, I don't know if it just me, but it makes my reflections look better, but yeah, I don't know. And anti aliasing also helps with reflections and stuff. And then this is for still images. Now let me show you guys how I do my intro one. Oops, that's alright. So let's go to render settings, load preset, and this one's named I forwarded because my buddy I forwarded. Uh, get, uh, he helped me out with it. I actually made most of it on my own, but he helped me out a little bit. So general, I got full render output. I got 1280 by 720 resolution 72, and then image resolution 1280 by 720. I got film aspect 1.778, pixel aspect 1, frame rate 25. Even though it should be 30, shouldn't it? But yeah, and then frame range, I got all frames. And then, um, shouldn't this be 30? I don't know, it's been working fine for me, but whatever. Save, um, let me erase this, I shouldn't have that on, sorry, it's messed up, but save, I just gotta check to save. Format, I got QuickTime Movie, right here. I got Depth 8 bit, name, whatever. Just check Alpha Channel, you don't need to do it because a lot of you guys, uh, will be making intros just with. There's a floor and text stuff, but like the intros that I'm going to be doing tutorials on are intros that you can make uh, just like the text and all the movements and objects and stuff. And then I can put in After Effects and add different things to the background so I don't have to have just the plain black, like you know, lame black background. And I don't really like how those intros that they just like put a floor in look, but some of them look alright, but not, but most of them I'd rather just ha have them rendered in After Effects on the Alpha channel. Um, 24 bit dithering and includes sound as I said earlier. I don't know what that is, so yeah. Multi pass, uh, as, uh, as same as before. Anti listing, same as before, 1 by 1, 2 by 2. Options, um, on this one, my ray depth is 6, my reflection depth is 2. 
I think I got that from Acres HD, but yeah, I just use that. Ambient occlusion, it's checked. Uh, contrast is 20 again. Global illumination, I could use, but um, the thing is that like my re my renders are like two to three hours without global global illumination, so it'll be, like they're usually like five hours with global illumination. And you know, it, honestly, since I'm not using like a floor or anything, it's just like a si I mean. I don't know, like, most of my intros are so fast, global illumination doesn't make a big effect. If I'm making, like, a slow-ish intro, I'll add global illumination, but, uh, you know, it's not necessary. But, you know, you can use it. In depth of field, again, it's, it's depth of field is actually a little bit more useful in intro, just because there's more depth. But, yeah. So, that's my render settings. A lot of people have been asking that, if you watch right here, if I render it out, I have, uh, that's not good. Uh, let's just add, like, a bunch of random stuff. And then, yeah, whatever. And then, uh, let's add, let's go to my code Draco under saying, sorry about this. Code Draco. Forward. Alright, now if I wanna, that's it. if I wanna render this out, a lot of people have been saying, whoa, how, why do you have so many render threads going through here when I only have one? So, let me show you guys how to do that. Go to edit, preferences, and go to renderer. As you can see, um, it'll usually just be unchecked and it'll do it like the regular, I think it's like 4 or something. But this really uh, will speed up your render time, but it will also uh, like slow down your computer a bit because it takes up some more of your CPU. So uh, like basically, just stick at like 6, render it out. If it's if it doesn't take any effect on your computer, keep going up. And basically, I went to 10. It worked, and I went to 11, and my computer was just like going really slow. So I just stick down to 10, and it worked fine. So I use 10 render threads, which means there's 10 little boxes going through my render when I render. As you can see, there's 10 of them. Yeah. Alright, thanks guys, and uh, stay tuned for the next tutorial. Alright, bye.